Hi. Okay. So let's today we'll be talking about how to approach the liver disease using the ultrasounds. Good night. So the imaging approach to the liver disease is an uh, important point of, of radiographic reading, ultrasound, diagnosis, and CT diagnosis. So all of them. I thought the ultrasounds, but this is the whole thing. And also the case discussion at the last uh, part. So liver disease, uh, what is the most important thing is the early diagnosis. Unfortunately, confirmed diagnosis is difficult to get because most of the time biopsy is really needed. Uh, the, you can really check the uh, blood chemistry and that. However, it's not specific. Uh, so clinical signs are also same. Uh, sleepiness, no active, and it's an old dog, and then the owner thinks that's maybe okay. Anorexia, vomiting, diarrhea, anything can happen with any disease. Only thing is maybe the icterus. Icterus will lead you into the liver disease. However, unless it's a toxic disease or something, most of the time, maybe it is too late. So the if the uh, sclerosis, hepatic sclerosis causing icterus, that usually means the end stage. And I don't think you can have any time to treat or even any method to treat that condition. So it is very difficult. And also, as you can see, incidental abnormalities on blood chemistry is pretty much uh, often seen. So for example, increased uh, uh, serum alkaline phosphatase, that's a very, very popular thing in a small breed of dogs because of the feeding schedule is uh, screwed up in a sense. So diagnostic approach is the same. Any disease, we will do the signalment first, history taking, very good history taking, what are you eating and that kind of thing. And then the physical exam, don't forget the physical exam. Right now, people start using ultrasounds to do physical exam. Ultrasounds is not the replacement method of the physical exam. So please consider these three things are the basic and also come up with a tentative differential diagnosis. Make a list. That is very important. Not many people are doing that. That is a problem. You listen to the owner, dog is not doing well. Okay, then let's do the blood chemistry or the blood test. Why? Why you wanna do that? You have to have some disease condition in mind. So I use the Daminit or the uh, vitamin D, whatever, whichever is okay. But yeah, think about the category of diseases first. And that's why you want to do this and do that. Okay. And then also in the United States, most of the time you talk about the money first. So you don't surprise, you don't make surprise to the owners at the end. So when the owner goes home, ooh, that was pretty expensive. That's not the good uh, practice you are doing. So diagnosis versus treatment. This is the key. What do you treat? Are you treating disease or disease condition? Or are you treating clinical signs? What I mean, very much important. If you think with your experience, the dog has very light disease, not a serious disease. So I can just treat the clinical sign. And then the dog by itself will treat the disease. That can happen, but if you're not experienced, you don't have 20 years of experience. 
then don't you think that is very dangerous offer you're making? That's why I think based on the symptomatic treatment, I don't know patient can heal that disease. That's why I like to have a confirmed diagnosis at the first time. So first visit, I want to make confirmed diagnosis. Then I can talk about treatment and prognosis. So you know how you treat and how the animal should react to that treatment. I don't think we are doing that very well in Japan. And that's not good. If you have a confirmed diagnosis, look up the textbooks or journals. They usually tell you how to treat, what's the good method to do it. That's why I feel very, very important to do this uh, scheme. Signal man confirmed a common disease in certain breeds, for example, portal system shunt in Yorkshire Terrier, Copatoxicosis in Bedlington Terrier or any Terrier group, polycystic kidney disease, a uh, polycystic liver in Japanese cat. Sorry, so those are the kind of a thing I can kind of lead myself into. What type of disease I should be thinking of? Physical examination, palpation of the liver. If it's around the edges or yeah, sorry, irregular surface. Mass, if I can palpate. So if you're doing every day or every time, then you will have very good feeling of it. So repeat each time. So don't skip the physical exam. Also check the teeth. Bad teeth often create the uh, bacteria, bacteria anemia. So blood, I mean the bacteria in the blood that will make the liver to work hard because they have to clean up those mass. So liver enzyme, of course, will go up. So just think about that. So one time, a uh, very famous uh, hepatologist, a veterinary hepatologist told me, usually ALP, uh, ALT, I'm sorry, ALT or GPT, will rise to about twice compared to the normal value just because of the bad teeth, okay? So that is one of the things uh, you need to consider. Once you have the idea what you are doing, what is your differentials, do the minimum database. That includes to me, radiography, ultrasounds, CT maybe, may not be, CBC, blood chemistry, and urinalysis. So those are the major, major examination or test I will do. How much does it cost? Probably 40,000 yen or more. If it includes CT, maybe 100,000 yen. That is a lot. But it is needed to come up with a confirmed diagnosis because based on those findings, I will do the FNA or biopsy. Or I may be doing the endoscopy. Okay? And once confirmed diagnosis is made, prognosis and uh, treatment strategy is there. And then you can talk about total cost. So the surgery costs this and that, all of that. It's very easy for the owner, easy for us also. So no surprise to either team, okay? So the team uh, treatment will happen with that. So diagnostic approach is liver panel adequate. What are the liver enzymes? How about albumin, BUN? Are you checking all those? Uh, CPR will be a good one to include. Blood tests and imaging is also combined most of the time. Imaging is not to make confirmed diagnosis. Imaging is just to make a differential diagnosis. Different imaging, 
expensive, yes. You do the ultrasound, you do the radiography, you do the CT. It is expensive, but sometimes it's needed. That's why at the beginning it's playing well. And biopsy or FNA, which one is accurate? Of course, FNA is better. I'm sorry, biopsy is better. Okay, the, the liver biopsy, maybe the uh, thumb head size, couple centimeters uh, square or, or the cubic uh, centimeter. That would be very, very important. Complete blood count, do the blood smear too. You're forgetting all the time. Blood chemistry, 15, 20 items, not uh, six, because it's a convenient thing that one of the uh, unit will just make six, basic. It's not enough. Imaging, radiography, ultrasound, slash FNA is the must. Total cost, <laughs> 1800 RMB, that's the Chinese <laughs> money, but I'm talking about probably 40,000 yen to 50,000 yen. If it's too much, maybe. So if you are feeling, this dog just ate the bad food yesterday and I don't have to worry about too much, then do the symptomatic therapy, that's okay. But if not, two weeks history of uh, vomiting or something, I will do the whole nine yards of the exam and then come up with the definitive diagnosis. That's my understanding. Cell minimum database. Share your differential with owner. So the owner understand why I have to do this test or examination. Rule in, rule out idea. Tell them the possible cause. Delay in treatment may cause early death. That's the one we need to avoid. Totally depending on you, your knowledge, your experience. But if you don't have experience, what can I do? Not much you can do about it. So you have to follow the basic approach. That's what I'm telling you now today. Is radiography an old te technology? No. Many organs. It's a shadowgram, yes. It's not like a CT. However, it's cheaper than CT. We don't need any drugs most of the time. So it is very reasonable to get the DR systems now, also the unit, radiography unit is not that expensive. By DR, not CR anymore. CR is not really wise decision to get. Why do we forget this method? I don't know. People really use ultrasounds or something uh, first. I don't understand that. Ultrasound CT is main, uh, ultrasound is mainly the topographical anatomical changes you want to look at. CT, yes, you can do the whole thing. However, it, it costs money and then if you don't know what you're doing, you're not going to get the good images. So those are the things. Get trained. CT need a training. Ultrasounds need also the training. Radiography, probably training is needed, but you can self-study relatively well for the uh, radiography part, okay? So the tubes and that, you don't really know much. Uh, remember though, stationary anode is not good, but right now everybody's buying this because the air system doesn't require much of the output. But I think still rotationary anode is better and not that expensive. Anode heat is the problem. And also the small focus and then the large focal spot, those are available for the rotating tube, but stationary tube only one filament. And I, I don't think it can give you much. Make sure you get this. 20 milliseconds or something. Uh, that's very important. Right now, many people are buying the MAS unit. MAS unit, you don't know what 
time you are getting. Short are the best. Right now, 0 0.01 second is a no. Right now, the the newest one usually can give you the 0 0.008 second. That's pretty darn good. And then you need probably 200 MA and then uh, 70 to 90 KVP. That should do the job, I think. So, pray <laughs> rectify you still use it. That's okay. This lasts 30 years, 40 years. So this is the one from the university. Uh, I, I guess they may be still using it. Um, this is maybe too old. So don't do that. Sierra DR looks great. Yeah, looks great. So Sierra is good. DR is good. Yeah. But the problem is, if you don't have enough X-ray exposure, then your image is grainy and they are not going to do a good job. So uh, I don't buy CR. I will buy DI unit. DI unit, then you don't need to buy the, uh, the or use the grid. So that is very good. Radiation protection, of course, don't get your fingers inside the thing. Yeah, so that's that's bad deal you are making. Don't want to get this. Okay, this is early time. Everybody was using uh, Google kind of a thing uh, to look at uh, fluoroscopy. So they are getting direct uh, exposure to their faces and fingers. That's not fun. Okay, cranial to the stomach is the liver. So I use the uh, stomach location and then the axis, stomach axis, to say big or small. Okay, and uh, relatively ventral, but dorsally, you have the caudal liver lobe. So make sure you always look up here, right next to the right kidney. That is liver too, okay? Shape, size, location, number, opacity, presence, or absence. This is the key to evaluate the radiograph. Don't forget that. Very important. Liver size, stomach axis. Beyond the last rib rule, I don't think it's good. Because most of them shows this ventral tip is beyond the rib cage. So I don't think so. Check for the gallbladder, like this area. Often you see the uh, stones and that, sand stones. Also in cats, especially cats, ventral to the liver aids, they usually accumulate a lot of phosphorus fat. And then you get this protruded appearance. This one doesn't have, but if you have that, that's probably the distending gallbladder, okay? Oh, this is big. Look at that. The, the stomach is way be, uh, coral. Stomach axis is also displaced, caudal. Also has a mass in the middle abdomen. That's probably the spleen, I guess. So this one definitely has some abnormality. So you think about it by enlargement, splenic mass, differential neoplasia, lymphoma, or hemangiosarcoma, or granulomatous disease. So next step, could be a congenital anomaly, like accumulation disease, uh, uh, what do you call those, uh, metabolic disease, like amyloidosis and that kind of thing. My amyloidosis don't usually go to the spleen. So, uh, think about any other congestion, congestive disease, maybe something like that. All the animals, of course, are neoplasia or endocrine disease. So big dogs, small dogs, maybe different, but do ultrasound FNA if needed. And thoracic rads, make sure you do the thoracic rads to see no nodules. If any nodules, trouble. Damn it. Or vitamin D, vitamin V, that's the additional vascular. 
and then you change the the the, the order, then you can read it as a vitamin D. So either way, well, these are the diseases. Okay, degenerative developmental metabolic inflammatory infectious anomaly intrusion neoplastic traumatic. So you can have in this case thoracic radiograph. We did ultrasounds. We did and our general anesthesia, and then the CT exam we did, and the laparotomy. No, <laughs> laparotomy, we don't want to do that because if this is lymphoma, you don't need to do it. So I've done an ultrasound slash FNA would be the good things to do, okay? So we did. And no metastasis in the lung, abdominal ultrasounds, liver nodule, capital lesion, Amanda sarcoma, no father exam by owner's request. Owner decided not to do much and then just uh, watch the dog to die. And that's a good decision by the owner. If they don't have money, they can still take care of until the terminal stage. Then the local vets can help to do uh, maybe euthanasia or help the pain relief or something like that. Opacity abnormality is usually immunization gallstones, interhepatic gallstones, or gas, sometimes hepatic abscess, pneumocorticistitis, sometimes you can see, not many times. But these are the all, always, always the gas producing bacteria. So you worry about those. So six years mixed dogs, sudden onset of inactivity, vomiting, listlessness, it trust pain in cranial abdomen, minimum database. We did. We took the radiograph. You can see this finding. Why can you see the diaphragm? Why can you see the liver edges? Doesn't make sense. Normal dogs do not show that. So this is the presence of gas, free gas. That's the abnormal finding. In addition, if you look at the cranial ventral area, I see the gas opacity. You don't have any gas there. The intestines will not go into this area unless you have a herniation into the thorax or the abdominal wall. So this is not right. See, this is not right. So this guy might have a gas in the liver and that's leaking into the abdominal cavity. Whatever it is, it is a bad disease. Gas producing bacteria is a pretty bad deal. Either the E. coli or the, uh, oh gosh, I don't, remember the name of the bacteria, but uh, the, the gram negative one, I thought. Those are bad ones. Usually you cannot really do a good job with antibiotic therapy. So grave prognosis. So we, this was unfortunately, the, the uh, owner was the vet student and he didn't have money. So he thought about maybe he euthanized the dog. I don't know in Japan that is acceptable idea or not, but if the owner cannot do anything and then what can you do? You wanna go in and then to take the liver out and then the uh, dog died next day and you say, okay, I don't need any money. Can you say that? How owner feel? The dog went through the surgery, painful surgery, and then the next day, dog anyhow died. If the owner feels that good, I did something for the dog, that's okay then. If not, if that was your decision to go on to do the treatment, that is a bad practice to me. So talk to the owner very well. So I'm making an approach to the liver Fast radiography, shape, size, number, location, make differential diagnosis, and you will go into the ultrasound. Because no anesthesia, you can get the tomographic and topographic anatomy. 
If you need, FNA will give you the quick final diagnosis. In addition, CT exam now very widely available in Japan. 3D images, vascular anatomy. So unless you do the vascular study, forget about CT. Like humans in Japan, they buy the CT unit to do the uh, typically do the whole body in a sense. And what are they looking at? Yeah, certain change in the abdomen. Why can they do that? Because humor is big. So the image looks good. But our patients are small. So if we blow up the images, we can't see any anything good. So that's why I have a summer reservation to do the CT exam. Also, you want to save the money for the for the diagnosis. I think you you should send those images to the specialist so we can help you what you are looking at. Okay, auto signs of the liver, hair clipping is important. Microhepatia, very difficult, so you have to maybe do the intercostal approach, but I don't like it, so I'll push it hard, <laughs> in a sense. Vessels, normal anatomy, over you can see the uh, the two vessels, I can see only one, but uh, the portal vein has a very hypoechoic uh, wall. Uh, hepatic vein do not have that. Check for the nodule and galvada inside like this. These are the sludge. Sludge is not a big deal. The, the mucosal, maybe you need to have the surgery. So that is sometimes important. Also, I sometimes see the uh, bio uh, uh, gallstones. Those may, may, may need to be removed. So just check for that. Uh, follow up and see if a little bit is high, I might do the surgery. Okay, ultrasounds, parenchymal disease, diffuse hypoechoic or hypoechoic, nodule or mass, that's FNA. Diffuse change, FNA. And video tracks, watch, <laughs> in a sense. For a sh systemic shunt, if you worry about it, do CT. And then the uh, vascular study, okay? Parenchymal lesion, diffuse, hypo, hypo, portal vein wall. If I see it very well, hypoechoic lymph. I don't see very well, hypoechoic lymph. Okay, and only seeing the moderate one. So the lot very uh, uh, mild disease, you cannot see it. So normal looking liver does not mean normal. That is a very important thing to remember. So this, I don't see the portal markings. So steroid hepatopathy, lipidosis, lymphoma, mast cell tumors, those are my differential. So what do I do? Stick the needle in. And if I see the mast cell, make sure you give the drug afterward. Otherwise, dog might go into the shop, okay? Because the, the granules will will uh, be destroyed and then the anaphylactic shock might happen, okay? In cats, most of the time, lipidose, lipidose due to fasting. So cat is not eating very serious condition. So do the ultrasound. If it's white, then you need to really do the force feeding. Okay, may that. The informal area, final aspect is the key. Congestion, most of the time, very much of a visible and dilated hepatic vein is the key. So the hepatic vein is not big, and then the hypoechoic, that probably means hepatitis group. Need biopsy is the best. Biopsy can give you all these kind of uh, uh, problems sorted out. FNA may not be enough to do that. If it's lymphoma, it's lucky you can get it. So, so you might do the uh, FNA anyhow. Okay, hypoechoic one, you do it. Severe cirrhosis, too late. So albumin is low, you check up, a lot of fluid, device, you know, very regular emergence. 
look at it like that. This is after euthanasia, okay? I don't know if they can live two, three weeks. So consider euthanasia, but in Japan, probably you're not going to do it. But all, think about owners. Owners are feeling really bad. They don't want to see the dog really suffering. Nodules. Relative nodules happens any dog over 10 years of age. So that's a key. Hepatic carcinoma. Prognosis varies. I think it's a bad idea to put hepatic carcinoma in one group. Hepatic carcinoma has a gamut of the disease phase and then the, uh, also the differentiation. So low differentiation, that's not good. <laughs> they, they are probably a bad disease. But the, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, low differentiation is a uh, is uh oh, which way? So yeah, that is a bad disease, I guess. And then the well differentiated carcinoma is uh I'm not sure if it's a carcinoma. It, it may be just the hepatoma, I I think. So that is a kind of a thing I worry about. That's why I like to have a biopsy. Metastasis, pancreatic cancer, can metastasize so as hemangiosarcoma, so worry about those. First radiograph is a must, okay? And if it's clear, next step, FNA. And then next step, maybe CT. And maybe the lapar laparoscopy, laparotomy, and then get the chunk. That's my approach. Sona, sonazoid or uh, ah, that's the name of the contrast, I guess. Uh, Professor Takiguchi in Hokkaido University is really publishing these things. And so you can really look at his thing, but unfortunately it's still very expensive. Yeah, so that's okay. Uh, so to me, I if I go into this ways, I might choose a CT because it's maybe cheaper. Okay, polarsystemic shunt, large dog, it's a mostly intrahepatic, so you can see it. Intrahepatic small breeds, very difficult, six months or less of age, I think you can really see it. Big, big. Abnormal vessels transversing the abdomen. Usually big, vessels go longitudinal, not transport. So that's my way of looking at. But NMI and fasting is the must. If it's more than one year of age, use the high or multi-detector CT. Nuclear medicine in Japan, we can't do it, except the Kitasato University, so forget about that. Okay. So for systemic shunt, usually we're looking at the big vessels. Goes right into the core of inner cava, going this way. Here, maybe over the diaphragm, anywhere. Okay, so that's the key. Oh, no, no move. So through transmission, gallbladder, sludge, those things you can see, gallstones, shadowing, in cats, uh, two centimeter outside, and the, most of the time you can see the pore vein and also the common bowel duct, very easy. Common bowel duct in dogs is a transverse plane, little, little bit of uh, tilted, but right, look at the right shoulder from the middle line, and then the, the next to the uh, pancreas, is, uh, the pancreas, the ordinum, you can pretty much see it. However, it is so small, if you don't see it, no big deal, it's okay. Mucous seal is like this, very hypoechoic wall and inside hypoechoic something, okay? If you get the spoke-like images like this, that's the end state. This is the rupture wall because you have a fluid. So these are the ones you want to cut. This one, I may wait. If bilirubin is high, cut it, okay? 
That's my recommendation. Clinical case, 15 years, severe diarrhea, listlessness, enlarged spleen liver, physical exam, dominant neoplasia because old dog. Yes, indeed, big, big. No question, big. Okay? And lung changes, a little bit alveolar, I don't know. Maybe something happening there. I con I combine this, 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 what disease? Infiltrative disease like lymphoma. Lymphoma. So I worry about it. So I did the ultrasound. I see these little bit of a big nodular looking, but not yet big enough. These are the typical race, racy looking. Okay, these are not good. Okay. Hepatomegaly, splenomegaly, sublumbar infantinopathy was seen also. This was lymphoma by FNA. Okay. How to do the D, uh, FNA? 25 gauge needle, 5 ml syringe, free hand jamming. No aspiration. That's my way of doing it. CT at last. Yes, if you have a multi row detector, let's say 32, 64, 80, 160, or more, it will be good because you can use just the uh, just the uh, uh, just the other uh, use the uh, sedation rather than general anesthesia. CT liver disease, liver versus spleen, more precise down to say for a systemic shunt. One to four rows, forget about that. Even 16, I don't like it. What do you want to see? Do it, but you may not find, okay? So make sure you always think about, think about why you are doing it, okay? You have it, that's why you do it. No, that's wrong. All right. Pathoanatomical changes, interpersonal skills, very difficult to learn. Summary, signal man history, physical exam, tentative differential diagnosis, make a list, next test, and do all, and then do a good job. Finally, liver disease, always think about biopsy. Yeah, it is difficult, but you can do it. All right, so that's, that's it.